team, keep it clean. I'm having my guy Ryan from Flock Rundown was so nice. We had to do it twice. And we got a very interesting topic of conversation today. Uh, because the Baltimore Ravens, as we know, regular season, they've been knocking it out the park. When they're healthy, it's like we, we ain't got nothing to worry about. But where the biggest concern has been for them um, has been come playoff time. It's like they turn into a different animal come playoff time. Um, but actually, some of that has actually started in the regular season. And what we're getting ready to talk about today actually came from the comments section. Uh, because I was looking through our comment section and my guy, uh, D. Raynell Grimm, he said, Harbaugh has a challenge and an opportunity. Harbaugh's biggest struggles are against the two people that know him best. Now, before we get into that, who do you think that is, right? Who do you think are the two people that know Harbaugh best who he struggles against? Uh, that's a good question. Andy Reid? Knows him really well. <laughs> He's from the Andy Reid tree. There we go. That's one. Yeah. Uh, two people that know him best. I don't know the other one. Who is the other one? Yeah, the other one is, is tricky, too, because it's it's simple. But at the same time, when you get put on a spot like that, it's hard to think. Yeah, of. yeah, yeah. I, I, didn't know I would have been I, I would have been lost myself. <laughs> Said uh, Coach Tomlin, Mike Tomlin. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't see them like in meaningful playoff games. I was thinking postseason, I think. But yeah, yeah oh, no, you're okay, right. I got you. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he said that those are the two longest tenure coaches, his teacher, Andy Reid, and Mike Tomlin, his rival that sees him twice a Fair. year. And we'll start off, we'll start off not small, but smaller uh, with Mike Tomlin because the Baltimore Ravens, it's been crazy. And again, it's been for a lot of different reasons, but bottom line, the Ravens, they have struggled with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it's been it's, some games Lamar has played, a lot of them he hasn't played. But the Ravens have struggled with the Steelers. And, and Tomlin has continued to call out John Harbaugh. Um, he's called out the team multiple times. He's talked about how they don't play uh, all four quarters. Uh, he talks about how they can be predictable. Um, I remember uh, he spoke about it in the game, I think it was last year, uh, the, the George Pickens-Marlon Humphrey game, uh, where George Pickens beat Marlon Humphrey on his first game back from injury. Uh, beat him for the game winning touchdown and, and and Mike Tomlin talked about how he knew that Harbaugh and them they were going to bring the house so George Pickens was going to have that one-on-one -on -one opportunity what do you think it is that causes Harbaugh and the Baltimore Ravens and obviously they're in the same division and they they see each other a lot but what do you think it is that really causes him to just struggle so much with the Pittsburgh Steelers I mean to be honest in those games I feel like sometimes they are out coached. Uh, mm. I, I I don't I don't, and that's not really saying that like Harbaugh's a bad coach by any means. I'm right. not on that team that like we should move on from Harbaugh or anything like that. But when you're going against guys like Tomlin or you know and Andy Reid that we'll talk about, um, mm. getting out coached in a game is gonna happen. Like they're they're elite elite coaches too, and I think that the Steelers have really countered a nice package to our offense because mm. they really have the personnel, especially now with adding Patrick queen, they got a lot more speed there, <laughs> yeah. um, but they love to blitz. They love to stack the box against us. And in the past, let's be real. We haven't really had the most elite backs. Love Gus Edwards, love justice Hill that we were using last year. Obviously it was unfortunate that JK went down. I think JK could have been that back that just creates a lot of stuff on, on, on his own. But uh, sometimes when you're stacking that box and we're, we're, we're like afraid to run because I don't think that we trust the run game in those situations. And uh, that's going to change this year, in my opinion, though, with Derrick Henry. And then also, I think the beginning of last year when we struggled against Pittsburgh again, when we play them week five, I think. Um, yeah, it was in the beginning of the season. Right. That was we're still getting used to Todd Munkin's offense at that point. The Ravens really didn't start getting creative and trying a bunch of stuff in Todd Munkin's offense until later in the year. I think if we would have played Pittsburgh that last week with our starters, the way we were rolling against San Francisco, Miami, Jacksonville, all those games, I think we would have wiped the Steelers and we would have been thinking a little different. I don't think they would have been able to shut us down. So I think this year should be a little bit of a different story. I mean, they, we're just adding more elements. You know, it's going to be really hard to stack the box and just use a traditional strategy against us when we got a guy like Derrick Henry who's going to 
not be easy to bring down and you're and you banned hip drop tackles i mean that's just an advantage oh. it's a, that's another advantage for a power run game uh so i think that they've been out coached in the past i think that that's tomlin has an answer and we don't have the personnel or the coaching in that moment to counter it but uh mm. i i do think this year this year is going to be different in that regard yeah and hopefully this year is different in the regards to how the AFC championship game went last season against the Chiefs. Now, with the Chiefs, um, it's been weird because with the Baltimore Ravens and Chiefs, I know a lot of people look at it as a rivalry. I don't. I, I just can't because the Chiefs, they have had our number. We got them in what? I think it was 2021. But other than that, there's been some close games. There's been some really tight games. But bottom line, we just, we've just been losing to the Chiefs. And with the Chiefs, they've literally had – pretty much everybody's number because they all they do is win over there. They got, what, three Super Bowls, I think. They just – they keep winning. Um, but John Harbaugh with um, with Andy Reid, one of the things that has been the most challenging and probably the most frustrating is not even the fact that they have lost and have been losing to the Chiefs. I mean, that's frustrating itself. But it's been the way that they've been losing to the Chiefs is because – we see what they do in the regular season. We see how they run the table in the regular season, like literally run the table because number one Russian offense. And then even in the week prior uh, last year in the playoffs against the Texans, first half they started a little bit shaky, but then the second half they really start running and start taking off. And it's like, all right, here we go. They go our Baltimore Ravens. We ready. Bring on whoever. And then when the Chiefs won that game against the Bills, it's like, all right, in order to be the best, you got to beat the best. And we had the Chiefs at the crib. And the Ravens just, when they when they face the Chiefs, this has been a regular season too sometimes, they just completely get away from who they are. It's like they forget their identity. Why do you think that is? And what, what do you think the reason that the Ravens have really been struggling with the Chiefs for so long for? Yeah, I mean, there's been so many close games. So I think mm -hmm. you got to take each game kind of – you know, in its own right. I uh, they speaking of the AFC Championship, just because it was the most recent. I think that was one of the biggest meltdowns they've ever had against the Chiefs. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, it, it at first it was it felt like it was our defensive fault. Like we couldn't stop anything for two drives. You know, like they go up fourteen, and it's like you you're feeling the pressure on the defense. But at the end of the day, when you look at the whole story. It, the defense only let up 17 points. That should be enough to win the AFC championship, especially, especially with, with our offense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like incredible job by the defense throughout the entirety of the game. So yeah. I'm putting it on the offense and the offense's decisions. You know, I didn't think Lamar had his best game in that particular yeah. game. And yeah. then just the coaching calls to go completely away from the run game. I understand they're giving you a look that makes it look like you can't run the ball, at, but it's still a close game. You know, most of that game was, 10 point game, seven point game. You're, it's not out of reach. You should just stick to what you do best. Like you just said, we're leading the league and rushing every single year. Uh, you can't have six carries. That's just not a balanced attack, you know? And then if you are going to do that, then Lamar better have his best game ever and the receivers better win their battles. And they, and they, all that just didn't happen together. So I think uh, there's a couple different factors, but uh, out coached. Uh, a little bit of afraid almost like mm. timid to do what we do you know what I mean and I and I which is weird in the biggest game I just think that uh I think it was a meltdown I think that I I don't think that that's normal I don't think we're gonna we should expect to see that I know a lot of people are you know already saying nothing matters until we're back there and I get it but like <laughs> I don't think that's something you should expect from the Ravens on a week-to-week -week basis but in that game, unfortunately, it happened. And this year, I think we counter once again, like I said earlier, with Derrick Henry, which is a ridiculous addition to, you know, we're going to use him. We're not – that, that to me, guarantees a balanced attack at least. Mm. Like, just because you, you're not going to run the ball six times. I mean, there's just no way. With Derrick Henry, you can't do that. So, I feel like, uh, feel like we are going to be more balanced, which is – our best chance to win. We need to be balanced. We need to establish the run and uh, use play action to hit things downfield, which is the run opens up that pass. So I, I, I think, uh, I think there's no reason to expect another meltdown, but it is concerning. It's going to be on the back of all of our minds for sure. Right. It, it sure will. And like you mentioned, a lot of people feel like, yeah, nothing else matters. 
until Ravens are back in the playoffs again. Ravens are back in the AFC Championship again. And then we'll see what happens there. Um, but do you trust the, the Baltimore Ravens in that situation? Uh, you talked about expectations for the regular season and potentially the playoffs too, especially with the addition of a Derrick Henry. But do you feel like we can trust the Baltimore Ravens to right their wrongs? And obviously we want them to win the Super Bowl. We want them to win it every year. But say, for instance, they lost again in the playoffs to somebody like the Chiefs. Uh, would you trust them to go down fighting their own fight instead of being somebody else? How do you feel about the Baltimore Ravens in the future clutch time? How are they going to be? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust them again this year. Uh, if it happens again, then we can have a different conversation next year. I think, <laughs> I think, I think then, uh, then my confidence might be out the window, but, uh, yeah. I, I, I feel like, you know, knocking on the door of a Super Bowl, getting to an AFC championship. This is the first r fairly healthy season that we've had in three years. You know, Lamar didn't even play in the playoffs two years prior to that. So mm. every year that Lamar's healthy and the Ravens are fairly healthy, we're making, some noise and at least making the playoffs and making a little bit of a run. So if we are healthy again, I have to trust that we're about to be knocking on the door again. I, I just, it's a very similar team, another year in this offense, adding Derrick Henry again, the line's probably my biggest concern, but I do trust that they're going to shore that up. I think whoever they roll out there, you know, week one, whether we make another free agent signing or trade mm -hmm. or whatever it takes, I think that, I got to trust that they're going to make the right decisions and our offensive line is going to be solid. Um, so, yeah, I'm putting my trust in the Ravens again. I think that they're going to learn from their mistakes last year. You know, I don't really see any reason to just be negative and just assume that we're going to fumble the bag again. But that will change. I mean, my opinion will change based off the evidence that they're putting out on the field. You know what I mean? So, like, if they flop in the playoffs or don't make a run or, or you know, lose to the Chiefs again, then – then I'm losing trust drastically. But for this season, I, I do trust them to right their wrongs from last season and and, and get the get the go the whole way.